Today I'll be taking my i7-8700K CPU and replacing the IHS with a nice new shiny copper one. Uh, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my CPU and put it in this little thing right here and clamp the other thing onto it. If you saw that little rock in there, that's basically what's just going to plow right into it and break that shit off of there. So we're going to take and bolt these two pieces together with these uh, Allen screws, most useless kind of screw. No, your eyes aren't playing a trick on you. I can actually move this fast. It is something I am willing to teach you for a very low cost. Just make sure you hit me up sometime and we'll, we'll, um, we'll work something out. So anyways, I'm right back to it. Just making sure this thing is nice and secure because you don't want it to bend. And once you've got everything tight, just go ahead and we'll tighten it some more. And then we're going to keep on tightening it and then we're going to say a little prayer and then go back and give it one nice little touchy tighten then we're going to tighten the big bolt on the end until we hear the sound mm, that's the sound of you voiding your warranty and possibly breaking your cpu we won't know until we open this back up honestly so let's open it back up yeet and now we're going to have even more video of me unscrewing this if you notice there is a band-aid around my thumb, I have not hurt myself, but I cut my glove and was just not feeling wasting another pair of gloves. Uh, so you improvise. You always improvise. Um, now we're, we're getting there. Open this bad boy up. Everything looks a little crooked, but check this out. Some of the glue is still stuck on there. I'll just finish ripping it off myself. I've already voided my warranty. There's no turning back now. And what I what I didn't notice was uh, in all the videos from Rocket Cools that there'd be a bunch of gunk there. Um, so now I'm gonna try alcohol, just straight alcohol on a paper towel. I'm gonna I showed you it was alcohol too. Uh, we're gonna take this and try and scrub all that gunk off of there. We only have the biggest scrubbing here at Obelisk Games. Here we go. This isn't working. So I decided to take the most coarse thing I can and scrub it directly onto my die because I'm good with technology. This time I've just applied more alcohol and decided, well, if it works on the die, maybe it'll work on everything else. I'm seeing that it kind of doesn't also work there. So I decided to start just scratching at it. Then I take this little piece of shit bamboo stick that all the stuff came with, which will be important later, um, and try to scrape it off of there, and that didn't work. And then I decide to make the most use anyone ever has out of a Fandango gift card. Since I haven't watched movies in over four years, this has really come in handy. And so now we're just scraping all that stuff off of there because you're going to reseal it anyways, or at least I am. Some people don't. I'm going to do it because I'm not afraid. I'm a big man now. I'm such a big man. I can go to Applebee's and get the two for 20 and eat it all by myself. Septuple B, biggest man. Look me up. So we're going to keep just scrubbing this shit right off of here, getting ready to put the new IHS on. This took a lot longer in, act, in person. Video editing makes it seem like it's not taking as long, but I still am moving that fast in real life. I did not speed anything up. The cuts are real, but that part isn't. Uh, so again, I'm just scratching at it some more, I guess, because uh, Intel invests more in their glue than they do the actual silicon that goes on to the die itself and we're gonna we're gonna brush it off and i'm gonna set it back in there because I, I like to have a nice little grip for uh cleaning it here's some more alcohol that i'm gonna dip into a black q-tip a black q-tip into i've never seen a black q-tip before but it came with this kit and i really wanted to use them so i'm just going to use this to try and clean off any of this excess residue around it Honestly, though, where where do you even get black Q-tips? Uh, so now we're picking up the Fandango card again. Really, this part wasn't necessary to show you, but I do want to show you how fucking annoying this is. Um, it looks like we're done. So now I'm going to take the copper IHS part. Well, first I have to screw the... No, I'm just showing you more stuff. Um, okay, yeah, so I'm getting ready for the actual... <laughs> Uh, uh, 
liquid metal part and um yeah so that's here's all the stuff i need and i'm keeping that little bamboo stick nearby it's going to be important and loctite loctite so uh, that was polish that i just threw over there and there's a scrubby pad that I could have used to get the black gunk off and I didn't. I don't know what this unmarked bottle is, but I keep it nearby just in case. So now that we're ready to actually start putting the other IHS on, what we need to do is mask this off and make sure that we don't get liquid metal, which is highly conductive, on any other part than the dye. This is also going to be important later. You can tell by my terrible skills at lining this up that I should probably pick a new profession or hobby in general because apparently after watching the video multiple times now I can see where there's bubbles right near the die and I should have really just taken more time with this but I was in a hurry and if we're gonna go big on temps we're gonna go big on bubbles we're gonna go big on everything here at Obelisk Games anyway some hours have passed and I've almost finished masking off the die so if anyone's curious why this took me all of like five hours to do, this is why. Jeez, I'm even moving at my usual super speed and it's just not working. All right, so it looks like we've got everything lined up pretty good. And now we're gonna clean the die itself. If it's shiny, it works good, just like how RGB makes your computer faster. Uh, so I'm gonna take this Q-tip and I'm gonna dip it in the alcohol that I like showing you and do like they did in the video on Rocket Cool's website. Just really just started doing that. But for some reason, uh, after it dries, which you'll be able to see, there's this like little schmutz that starts showing up for some reason, and I can't get it off of there, and I start to worry that I'm about to have to spend a lot of money to replace this thing, and so I just dip it in more alcohol. Cause you know what I say, if it doesn't work the first time, do it exactly the same way again, but add more of whatever you were using. Now I'm getting desperate, so I'm gonna pick up one of these microfiber Q-tips which I also didn't know were a thing and try and scrub it off of there and you can see by how fast I start going that I'm getting worried because it's not working and it's still not working and you can kind of see it in the reflection that there's some schmutz on there I can't get off and we're just going to keep scrubbing at it and hoping for something cool to happen um, I'm gonna take this pink piece of shit and try and scrub on it too. That doesn't work, so I just take this and scrub even fucking harder to try and really get that stuff off of there because I'm worried at this point because this is not how it looked in the video. Maybe I have bad alcohol. Maybe I didn't read the label close enough. Um, and so now I'm just scrubbing it more. I think I dipped that one in the alcohol because I'm just throwing alcohol at everything. I heard acetone works pretty good, but I don't keep that stuff around me. If you were to freeze this video frame by frame and look at my reflection in the die itself, you would probably see me just craning over a table, mouth open, drooling with my eyes wide and bloodshot because that's how I am in my natural environment. I think the alcohol made it dirtier than the factory silicone ever did. Silicon, silicone, whatever. If I'm getting this wrong, I'm sure someone will correct me, then I will continue to say it wrong because I don't learn things very well. Okay, I, I think I finally decided that this is enough. If it's gonna fuck up, it's gonna fuck up. So I decided to pick up the liquid metal. We're gonna go ahead and open this bad boy up. Um, this is the part that I've been looking forward to because it's the most sensitive. So we're just gonna go ahead and, ooh, the fuck was that? There's no syringe on there. Let's see that again in slow motion. And one more time. Boom. That's right. Some of it just spooted out of there as soon as I picked it up. And I see there's no syringe on it, so the tiny amount of liquid metal I need is going to be almost impossible to measure out. And you might be wondering, what gave you the idea that there would be a needle connected to it? Do you, do you expect people to just not shoot this in their veins? Well, I'll tell you where I get the idea. It's from their video. That's the video of them putting liquid metal onto a die and the stuff they recommend that is on their website, they're using it and there's a needle on it. So I expected there to be a needle, but there wasn't. Anyways, let's just clean this motherfucker off and move on. My disappointment is immeasurable, but we'll see 
I have no idea how fast this stuff is gonna come out, but I don't have enough to test it. So we're trying to press it as little as possible. And some of it comes out and I'm like, hey, maybe that's enough. Cool. By this point, I have forgotten which of the uh, microfiber Q-tips I've used with alcohol and which ones I haven't. So I just pick up the one closest to me and start spreading this shit around on there. What this is going to do is connect to your IHS and be a lot more thermal conductive, for lack of a better term. So that way you get a more accurate read on your temperatures and your cooler and CPU fan can react accordingly. And liquid metal is just going to be a lot more conducive for that the only downside is is that unlike thermal paste this is highly conductive so if it gets anywhere except where you want it you can pretty much short everything and about halfway through this process after i'd already delitted it i started to realize the gravity of that and decided to just keep going so here we are just spreading out liquid metal um, figuring out how much of my savings I can move around to replace all this in the event that I plug it back in and everything just shorts to hell and back and we're just going to keep on scrubbing away well spreading away and I, I keep getting some in the little side parts I want you to take a note at the bottom of the video that little dot that's right there what that means is um this this shit pretty much got everywhere i'm gonna go ahead and spoil it for you it got everywhere it started showing up in places yeah i even checked to see if it dried two hours later and it hadn't and i got worried because it was all over my hands at this point um so i start to take off the tape which i'm not good at either this just proves that anyone with two hands and half a brain can do stuff in the it field um and I keep on trying to pull it off and then I notice something you see out there at the top where I clearly have liquid metal on the PCB part or whatever that part is called yeah that can be a problem because uh, like I said highly conductive so I spend the next hour or so trying to uh, clean that off and I stop focusing on the camera because I put a q-tip to it and smeared it and um, I'm trying my best to clean it and I don't know if it cleaned all the way I I mean I took paper towel to it you can see it smear in the video but at this point I've decided fuck it let's just keep going so there's a little dot on the top of the IHS line it up with the triangle on the uh, that part of your CPU and what we have to do now is basically draw out a rectangle equivalent somewhat I say somewhat because of my performance here we have to take even less of that liquid metal still hard to measure out because there's no needle um, and draw out what looks like the die because that's where it'll connect at I'm also not an artist in any sense of the word so this was very difficult for me what was supposed to be a rectangle turned out to be more like a trapezoid with a rounded top I'm not sure if that's a real shape so I started drawing this little this little rectangle and I'm trying to line it up in all different kinds of ways. Part of me thinks that if I move the IHS around enough that I'll get a better idea of how I'm supposed to draw this rectangle out with a Q-tip and liquid metal. But I can tell you that it doesn't get any easier no matter how I decided to do it. And at this point, I think it's long enough, but I'm also not even lining it up correctly there. I really overthought this part because what I realized even after I finished the atrocity that I call a rectangle on there and put it on to the CPU that it performs just fine. I think I put plenty on there. The last thing you'd want to do at this point is think that the issue is not enough liquid metal. Uh, so th that was enough. Wow, I did apply more liquid metal. I did it kind of smart this time though. What you don't see before this part is that I kept trying to get out the perfect amount so many times. See, look, I just wiped it off. That happened more like five or six times. I just showed once in the video. And here I am, uh, even after about four hours of being at this, I'm still going my usual super speed. I am the direct influence for the popular video game franchise you know today as Sonic the Hedgehog. I am the actual Sonic.
And while we wait for me to finish struggling with this simple shape, don't forget to follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash obeliskgames. And you can also see exclusive clips from that on my TikTok at obelisk underscore OG. I want to also point out there was no instruction booklet that came with this. There's a couple outdated videos on their website. And I only know it's outdated because what I received and what it looks like they use in the videos are quite a bit different. So if you get this, you can kind of use this video as a guide instead as how to, you can improve on it. Oh, right here, I do something pretty cool. I dropped it and I got really scared that the that it would have landed on the side with the liquid metal. And if it did, I would have had to completely redo it. Oh, and as you can see on the table, that liquid metal shit's getting everywhere. It's getting everywhere. I don't know what surfaces it is and isn't on, and you know where where there's going to be electricity running through or not. But it's all over the head of that, I imagine. Now, I probably should have cleaned that off because that can corrode certain types of whatever but i learned and this time and i took the loctite super glue and i squirted some out on a paper towel to get a feel for how fast it comes out before i put these four dots so instead of all that black gunk i just put four dots in the corners of this new ihs um and that's what i'm going to use to reseal it some people don't reseal it because they're cooler than me and that's fine um and now we're about to set it and like i said before this uh piece of shit bamboo stick was important you basically use it to slowly drop this on there and boom it's ready to go now we take the rocket i get it it's called rocket cool because look at this it looks like a rocket now that's cool i take back all the bad stuff i said about rocket cool all those inconsistencies fall to the wayside when you put a little rocket ship in there. So now we're back to screwing stuff back in again. Uh, we take more Allen keys. I didn't drop that. Now your eyes are playing tricks on you. Screw this bad boy down because we got to press this to the to the to the green part. I don't know if it's a PCB. I don't want to sound like a moron. We take this big ass screw and press it down into it and voila, look at there. Was, look at it. It goes his little rocket ship. He goes, you know, and then you wait a little while and look at it. It's a little rocket ship. It flies out of here and we take it out and see if I messed it up as bad as I think I did. Looking back at the video, the unscrewing the Allen keys, the Allen screws was probably the most time consuming part because it doesn't match up. They're awkward to hold and they're usually slippery. Um, it looks pretty, but I still have one more to unscrew. And uh, this IHS is a bit bigger than the stock one. So here we go. Let's see if it uh, sticks together. Oh, that's pretty. That's real pretty. Look at that. Have you ever seen the bottom of a CPU before? That's the bottom. This is the top. You can tell because it's copper. Mm. And, like I said, there's the little dot in the bottom right corner. That was really helpful with lining it up. And, uh, I guess now it's time to put it into the PC. It looks really good next to all the black internals. And yes, I know those brackets are upside down. That is going to get fixed, but we'll take this Noctua thermal paste and get ready for my new Noctua U12S Chromax to go in there. That took way too long to put in because I'm an idiot, but about this much thermal paste is good to go. This is the first time I applied thermal paste and with all the times I messed up putting my cooler on, I did it about eight times. So I have none of that left. You'll have to get your own. And uh, this is after I flipped the brackets over. And as you can see, the thermal paste looks different because I had to do it again. And now that we got the cooler in, it's about, uh, let's see, four in the morning. I guess it's time to put it together and turn it back on. All right, this is a little bit of ASMR for you guys. I'll just let you savor this.
Mm. Mm -mm. All right, let's see if she turns on. Hope nothing explodes. There we go. I didn't short my shit. It actually worked. See, even a dumbass like me can do stuff like this. Temps are sitting relatively low at like 30 degrees Celsius. I'd say that was a success. Overall, it's not the worst experience I've ever had. There are a lot of funerals I've attended that I wish I didn't have to. It did exactly what it was meant to do. My temps are a lot more stable and they're lower at idle and at full load. Though I wish Rocket would do a bit better about you know, including maybe an instruction manual or at least a list of things that are inside the packages they send because I have this little orange smelling shit in, that, in an unmarked bottle and I have no idea what it is. Um, somewhere on the site it says cleaner, but I don't know what surfaces that can and can't be applied to. Um, in the video showing you how to put the copper IHS on, the syringe they show has a needle on it, and that is a crucial part to making sure you don't put too much of anything on your CPU. And I think that's pretty important when you're getting people to avoid their warranties and possibly fry their computers to use your products. Yeah, if you're interested in doing it, I say go for it. But it, I don't know, looking back at the stress, I don't think it was that worth it. We'll see how it looks in a few months. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch at uh, shit twitch.tv slash obelisk games um depending on where you're watching this also follow me on tiktok at obelisk underscore og um i'm gonna put more stuff everywhere peace